from Los Angeles to a worldwide audience, this is Boaz Power TV, where we take your life to the next level. Now, internationally known speaker and author, here's Boaz. Hi, welcome to the Power Show. You are part of the Power Nation, and I'm delighted that you're here. Because here we help you improve your attitude, your relationships, your finances, and your career. This is message number 150, episode 150 on Boaz Power TV. And I call this one a limo ride into the future. You know, life sometimes can throw us a curve. A valuable lesson is this. It's not what happens. It's not what happens. It's how we react that makes the big difference. Sometime back while I was traveling for a speaking engagement in Florida, from there to Bend, Oregon, my flight was delayed by heavy rain in Atlanta. Finally, we took off. I was a little concerned about the arrival time in Portland because I was due to catch a smaller plane for a 45 minute hop over the mountain to Redmond, Oregon. Redmond is about 20 miles away from Bend, a central Oregon community located in an elevation of about 3,000 feet. Now that short hop by plane when attempted by car would take about three hours. The weather in November in Oregon meant there might be some snow on the mountain and that would make the drive a tough one late at night. So as my flight landed at 10.30 that evening in Portland, I ran down the hall toward the connecting gate at Redmond to Redmond and I hollered, where's the flight to Redmond? To the lady behind the counter. And, and the lady said, it left 10 minutes ago. Oh my gosh. My speaking engagement at Bend was scheduled for 8 a.m. the next day. And I don't miss events, I just don't. You know, I'm of the kind, you get there. Whatever it takes, you just make it happen. There was no way to, um, to take her up on her offer to fly me to Redmond the following morning. The lady said, we can fly you tomorrow morning. That doesn't work, I gotta be there at eight o'clock. And it wasn't gonna get there in time. So getting upset at that point wouldn't have helped. My options were either to rent a car and drive the 160 miles over the mountain or find someone else to drive me. That week's speaking schedule across the country was a little tougher than usual and I had been up late the night before to, uh, as I traveled to Florida. Thus, I decided it would be safer to have someone else drive. I got my baggage and went outside to find a ride. There were a couple of town cars available. The first driver didn't want to drive the distance. A smiling lady driver with a noticeable Russian accent said, sure, I'll drive you there. We agreed on a price and took off into the night. Now, since my parents were from Europe, I was quite interested in her accent and her native country. Her name was Nina and her warm smile would have made any passenger feel comfortable. I learned that she came to the Portland area in the early 90s with her two sons in order to escape the persecution that many people experienced in her native Russia. Some people will do anything to get away from persecution. Now her first husband was killed in an accident when her sons were young and without knowing a word of English, she immigrated to America. Reminds me of my parents when we came. None of us spoke a word of English. By her current command of the language, this was obviously a bright woman. Now it's amazing how much we can learn from people when we show genuine interest and ask a few questions. Ask a few questions. You know, in the uh, Dale Carnegie book that I promote in my seminars all over the world, How to Win Friends and Influence People, he said the bottom line of success, be genuinely interested in other people. Be genuinely interested in other people. What a great secret to success. And so it is amazing how much we can learn from people when we show genuine interest and ask a few simple questions. The following are the ones I use and teach to my audiences as a way to connect with most anyone. Where are you from originally? If not from here, what brought you here? Do you have a family? What do you do? And what did you want to be when you were growing up? These are all non-threatening questions people enjoy answering when you're genuinely interested. So as Nina realized that I was genuinely interested in her story, she opened up easily as the car began its climb up the mountain road. A light rain turned into some snow flurries as we ascended. I was glad I had chosen not to personally drive myself that night. I found out that as Nina's two boys became teenagers, she married an American and the family moved to Tulsa, Oklahoma. 
Tulsa, Oklahoma. What an amazing fact. When my family immigrated to the U.S., we settled in Tulsa because that's where my uncle lived. When um, we ask enough questions, we often find bridges of commonality with other people. It's simply incredible. We had a fun time chatting about Tulsa and attractions there that were familiar to both of us. Nina related that her second marriage proved to be a big mistake and that she finally had the courage to end it. A move back to Portland was her way of putting some distance between herself and her ex and getting a fresh start. Driving the limo was the first job she got upon her return to Oregon. A few more questions revealed that Nina in her 40s had thought about going to school for a long time. She wanted to make something of herself in America and considered becoming an accountant by taking some courses in a community college. However, like many of us have done from time to time, she kept putting it off. I boldly asked her, is there any reason why you shouldn't sign up for a beginning course tomorrow? I told her that the next five years were going to pass whether she went to school or not. Maybe it was my bold tone of voice, I don't know, or the fact that a stranger had shown genuine interest in her life. Nina suddenly said, I'll do it. I'll do it. Before I knew what was happening, she got on her cell phone and called her son. She told him she was going to sign up for a course at a community college. He was so pleased and excited, he decided to go with her and sign up for some courses himself. When we finally arrived in Bend, it was about two o'clock in the morning. It was cold and there was snow on the ground. But in the heart of a Russian immigrant, there was joy because she had decided to finally take some action on something very important to her. Her courage and her spirit did just as much for my heart. Maybe it's time for you to take an important step, an important goal from a parked position and onto the road of action. Clarify your driving ambition and get into gear. It's time to roll. So here's the affirmation for this episode of Boaz Power TV. You may want to write it down. I'm dusting off an important goal and taking action on it today. I am dusting off an important goal and taking action on it today. Thank you for joining me. If you like these messages, and many people do, please do me a favor. Forward this to five people you know. Suggest they go to my website, boazpower.com and suggest they also subscribe to the free weekly Boaz Power TV messages. You are special, you are unique, you are destined for greatness, and I have a feeling you're going to get some goals going in the right direction today. I see it in you. You are a champion. Have a powerful day. This has been Boaz Power TV. To comment, see other episodes, or to subscribe to this free broadcast, go to our blog at boazpower.com. That's boazpower.com. We're here to take your life to the next level.